Now we're going to talk about what happened when Galileo went through puberty. No, just kidding. Now we're going to talk about the special case of uniform relative motion. So of course, what that means is that all of the velocities are constant. Nothing is accelerating. Same thing it meant when we were doing kinematics problems. It's uniform motion. Nothing is accelerating. So the problem we're going to work on is a boat crossing a river. So here we've got the river, and the boat is trying to get to a dock. So there's the dock. There's the boat. There's the dock. This is the land, which is one of our frames. And this is the water, which is another frame. And there are different frames because the water is rushing to the side at 3 meters per second. So you can imagine the water represents, when the boat is in the water, it's a frame of reference moving at 3 meters per second that way. The boat, whenever it's in the water, it feels like it's going 5 meters per second this way. So relative to the water, the boat moves 5 meters per second up. Okay. So if the boat just goes like that, one question we could ask is, by how much will it miss the dock? You could probably just do this intuitively with kinematics, but let's go ahead and look at the uh, relative motion problem. Because the way you want to set up sort of a reference frame problem is you want to say, what am I looking for? What am I trying to get? What do I want? Right? You want the velocity vector for the boat in the uh, land frame. You want boat uh, BL. Because we're trying to figure out how far it went relative to the land. Right? In the water, we know it just went north. All it knows is it went north. But the dock is connected to the land. Where it started is connected to the land. So we need to know how far it's really moving in the real frame, the land frame. So whenever you have what you want, all you got to do is write that equals v, the same symbol, and write the first one that you had, the first one you're looking for, dash. And then just go ahead and move over and say plus v, except make your v nice like that. And then put the dash in what you're looking for, land. Right? See, the BL just got split up into B and L. And then in between, you just stick what you're dealing with, the water. Ooh, subscript, like that. And then you always get the formula right. You want the velocity of the boat in the land frame? Well, that's the velocity of the boat in the water plus the velocity of water in the land. It'll always work. So that's how you can remember how to set it up. Well, in this case, this one, everything is sort of perpendicular, so this one isn't too bad. The velocity of the boat in the land frame, boat in the water, is 5 meters per second i hat, basically. So you'd say 5 i hat. And it has no j hat component, no horizontal component. And the water is all j hat, right? So plus 3. I'm sorry, this was j. This was in the y. It's backwards, right? j is the vertical. And the, the lateral, the horizontal, is 3 i hat. So this is y and this is x. So instantly, then, you get your velocity of the boat According to the land frame, it's just the sum of those two vectors, the vector sum. So if you wanted to solve that problem, how much will it miss the dock, then you, know, you would probably just do sort of two one-dimensional problems. You'd say, how long is it in the water? Uh, delta t would be, well, it's going 5 meters per second. And you got to know the width of the river, which I didn't tell you, which is 20 meters. Right? So it'd be 20 meters divided by 5 seconds, so 20 5 meters per second equals 4 seconds. So there's your y part. And then your x part is simply 4 seconds going 3 meters per second. So it's going to miss by 12 meters. Right? 4 times 3 equals 12 meters. So we set it up with a little relative motion, but we really didn't need it that badly. You could almost just do that one with two kinematics problems, pretty much what we did. But here's a slightly more complicated question. If the boat wants to hit the dock, so this was question one. Here's question two. To hit the dock, um, at what angle should he steer? What angle should the boat set out at relative to, uh, to the water, relative to the, the 
perpendicular bank. So we could kind of draw it instead. We could say, oh, it's going to go off like that in an attempt to end up at the dock. So at what angle theta? Still five meters per second. That's what the motor does. But what angle should you turn off at? Well, let's see. You would still say we need to use this same equation. This is still the relevant equation. Velocity of the boat in the land is boat in the water plus water of the land. But uh, let's see what we get. So the velocity of the boat uh, relative to the land is, so velocity of the boat relative to the water, so we just have our two components. In this case, the x component is actually negative five meters per second sine theta. It's a little unusual. Minus five sine theta, i hat, plus, and then it's plus five cosine theta, j hat. So there is that one. And now the velocity of the water relative to the land is just three meters per second in the x direction. So plus three uh, i hat. There it is. So here's your i hat components, and here's your j hat component of what the boat is doing. And then you've got to go to the problem and say, what are we, what's it going to take to hit the dock? And basically what it's going to take is we need velocity, boat in the land, the x component, to be 0. We could take this back to a position problem, but we don't really need to. If the x component is 0, it's just going to go straight like that. So you can actually solve it that way. So let's write this x component. It's minus 5 sine theta plus 3 has to equal 0. And the only unknown is theta. So sine theta equals 3 fifths. Sine theta equals 0.6. And theta then, if you take the inverse sine, is 36.9 degrees. So if the captain takes off at 36.9 degrees to the normal, it won't go like at a curve and get swept back. It will literally, the boat will be tilted and it'll just go north just like that and hit the dock. 